Hello everyone, we continue chapter 10 by starting section 10.2, which is about trails, paths, and circuits. So we start with the definition of a walk, a trail, a path, a circuit, a closed walk, and a simple circuit. Consider G as a graph, and let V and W be two vertices in this graph. A, a walk from V to W is a finite alternating sequence of adjacent vertices and edges of graph G. Uh, so we can show a walk in the following way. Uh, a sequence of V0, E1, E, V1, E2, all the way to V n minus 1, E n, V n. Uh, in this sequence, all the V's represent vertices and all the E's represent the edges of graph G. V0, which is the first uh, vertices, vertex of this um, sequence, uh, is equal to V, which is the start point of the walk. And Vn is W, which is the end point of the walk. And for all I from 1 to N, uh, Vi minus 1 and Vi are the endpoints of EI, right? So EI is incident on the vertex before it, which is VI minus one, and the vertex immediately after it, which is VI. A trivial walk from V to V consists of a single vertex V. So when we say a trivial walk from V to V, uh, we mean only a single vertex with no edge. Uh, that's also create, and that you know that only vertex also creates a walk. That's a trivial walk. And a trail from V to W is a walk from V to W that does not contain a repeated edge. So a trail is a walk, but the only difference is it does not contain a repeated edge. It cannot, it's not allowed to have any repeated edges. A path from V to W is even a more confined version of a walk. It's a trial, I'm sorry, it's a trail that does not contain a repeated vertex. So we can conclude that a path is a walk that does not contain a repeated edge and repeated vertex. It does not contain a repeated edge because a path is a trail, right? And obviously it does not contain a repeated vertex. Okay, so a closed walk is a walk that starts and ends at the same vertex. So a closed walk is a loop. You know, the start and end points are the same. And a circuit is a closed walk that contains at least one edge and does not contain a repeated edge. So a circuit is like a closed trail, right? Because a trail was a walk that did, uh, did not contain a repeated edge. So a circuit is a closed walk that does not contain a repeated edge. That's why you can think of circuit as a closed trail and a simple circuit is a circuit that does not have any repeated vertices except the first and last so a simple vert a simple circuit uh, you can think of a simple circuit as a closed path because a path was a trail that did not have any repeated vertices and obviously didn't have any repeated edges. So a simple circuit is, a, is like a closed path uh, in which the start and end points are equal, but except the start and end points, uh, that, you know, that circuit has no other uh, repeated vertices. This table, uh, as you see here, this table uh, compares 
walks, trails, path, closed walks, circuit, and simple circuit based on different criteria. For example, it shows you that walk and closed walk are the only, you know, are the only walks that are the only definitions that allows uh, repeated edges. Uh, the, the definition of trail, path, circuit, and simple circuit do not allow repeated edges. Uh, in a similar way, you can see that a closed walk, circuit, and simple circuit, uh, they must have the same start and end point, but a path uh, cannot have the same start and end point, and walk and trail allow uh, having start and uh, having the same start and end points in a similar way you can see in the last column of this table uh, that uh, in a walk trail path and closed walk uh, you can have no edge i mean it allows you to have no edge but in a circuit and a simple path and I'm sorry, in a circuit and a simple circuit, you must have at least one edge, right? Okay, so in the previous slide, we mentioned that uh, a walk can be represented by an alternating sequence of vertices and edges. But here, uh, we see an example, example 10 to 1, um, in which there are some alternating notations that are simpler and shorter that, and represent unambiguously uh, the same walk. For example, in this graph, uh, the notation E1, E2, E4, and E3 uh, refers unambiguously to this walk, okay, which is uh, B1, one e1 v2 e2 v3 e4 v3 e3 and v2 so as you see this is the sequence that represent uh, such walk so you can simply shorten this representation uh, and only show that walk with, with four different edges. On the other hand, the notation E1 is ambiguous. Why? Because we don't know if it represents the walk V1, E1, V2, or it represents the walk V2, E1, V1. In fact, uh, E1 shows a walk, but it does not show the direction of the walk, if it is from right to left or from left to right. Okay, so in part B of the same example, uh, we consider this graph, okay? In this graph, consider the, the notation v1, v2, v2, v3. Uh, so we start with v1, then v2, again v2, and then v3. This, this, this representation or this notation unambiguously shows the walk v1, e1, v2, e2, v2, V3 to V3, this long representation. So uh, we can simply shorten this representation and write it this way V1, V2, V2, V3. So the question is can we always do the same thing and remove um, all the edges in the representation of a walk? and show a walk only using the vertices participating in that walk? The answer is here. If a graph does not have 
any parallel edges, then any walk in G is uniquely and unambiguously determined by its sequence of vertices. So what is the answer? The answer is, if no parallel edges participate in a walk, then you can uniquely determine that uh, walk using the sequence of vertices and you can safely remove all the edges from the notation uh, from the representation of that walk okay so let's see another definition which introduces the concept of connectivity in a graph let's see be a graph and two vertices v and w of g are called connected if and only if uh, there is a walk from V to W. Then you can say the graph G is connected if and only if given any two vertices V and W in graph G, there is a walk from V to W. Symbolically, we can say G is connected if and only if for every vertices V and W belongs to the vertex set of G, there exists a walk from V to W. Please note that V and W can be the same, but again, it's okay because there's a walk uh, from any vertex to itself. Uh, let's see an example of connectivity of a graph in this example you're asked to find uh, to find out if a graph is connected or not uh, in part a as you see there is a walk between any two vertices of this graph there are six vertices uh, and there are 15 different uh, pair of vertices in this graph and for every uh, pair of vertices in this graph there's a walk for example if you pick v2 and v6 as a pair of vertices in this graph uh, this walk exists you see v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 this is a walk from v2 to v6 if you pick v3 and v5 this walk exists v3 v4 and v5 any two uh, vertices uh, on this graph that you pick there exists a walk from uh, one of them to the other so uh, the graph of part a is connected how about the graph in part b the graph in part b is disconnected why because uh, if you pick v4 and any other vertices like v2 there is no walk uh, from v4 to v2 because vertex v4 is isolated and there is no edge on this graph that is incident on v4 so you cannot create a path a walk or a path starting uh, on v4 and ending on any other vertex of this graph so this graph the graph in part b is not connected the graph that is not connected is called disconnected uh, now let's look at part c part c looks like a connected graph but it's not why because there is no walk from v1 to v2 or there is no there is no walk uh, from v4 to v5 or v4 to v6 uh, it's that simple since there is no walk between a pair of vertices in this graph you can simply uh, conclude that uh, this graph is not connected in fact since the connectivity of a graph is defined using a universal statement right here 
So in order to prove the disconnectivity or in order to disprove the connectivity, you only need to show a counterexample. You need you only need to show uh, two vertices that are not connected. You need to show two vertices like V and W such that there is no walk uh, from V to W, correct? Okay, so here let's see a lemma, lemma 10 to 1. This lemma says considering G as a graph, if G is connected, then any two distinct vertices of graph G can be connected by a path. So based on the definition of uh, graph connectivity, any two ver distinct vertices of a connected graph can be connected using a walk, but this lemma claims that they are also connected using a path, not only a walk. A path mean a, means a walk uh, with no repeated vertices and no repeated edges. The second part of this lemma says, if vertices V and W are part of a circuit in G, and one edge is removed from the circuit, then there still exists a trail from V to W in graph G. This is a very interesting uh, claim. This is a very interesting lemma. Basically, if you have a circuit like this, and you have two vertices on this circuit, one is here, the other is here. And if you remove an edge from this circuit, for example, you remove uh, this edge from a circuit, so we basically disconnect this circuit. So this circuit is not a circuit anymore because we remove one of its edges. Mm, so in this case, there still exists a trail from V to W in graph G. So this is the uh, trail that still exists uh, from uh, between these two blue vertices. You see, you can start from here and go this way to reach to the other vertex. So this is a trail that still exists, although we removed this edge. But before removing this edge, there were two distinct, uh, there are at least two distinct, uh, you know, trails between uh, these two vertices. One was this one, and the other was uh, this one from uh, the left side. But now, because we remove one edge, uh, we may we may, we don't we do not have this trail anymore, but we have one other trail. In part C of this lemma, uh, we basically say if G is connected and G contains a circuit, then an edge of the circuit can be removed without disconnecting graph G. So. Part C is a direct uh, conclusion of part B. Why? Because it basically says if it's in a circuit like this, we remove one edge, we do not disconnect the graph, and that's because uh, there still exists a, a, trial, a trail between any two vertices of uh, this circuit, this disconnected circuit. That's why uh, part C is a direct conclusion of part B. Now let's look at a definition, the definition of a connected component. We say graph H is a connected component of graph G if and only if three conditions are true uh, for graph G. The first condition is H is subgraph of G. Second one is H is uh, connected. The third one is no connected subgraph of G has G as a subgraph and contains vertices or edges that are not in H. 
So uh, if you want to summarize or if you want to make, uh, if you want to simply explain the third condition, if you want to simply represent the third condition, you can simply say H is the largest uh, connected subgraph of G that cannot that 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 that, that contains uh, the vertices and edges of H, or you cannot you can you can easily say uh, H is a subgraph of G that is not part of a larger subgraph of G that is connected. So uh, H is not part of a larger connected subgraph in G. That's what uh, the third condition explains. So in order to illustrate uh, the definition of connected component, let's see example 10 to 4. Uh, which is about the connected components of a graph of a given graph in this figure. Uh, the question is find all connected components of the following graph. Uh, so you can easily see that there is a connected component at the left in the left hand side of this figure. Uh, this connected component contains three vertices v1, v2, v3 and two edges e1 and e2 obviously this uh, subgraph is connected and it's not part of a larger subgraph uh, is not part of a larger connected subgraph of graph g that's why uh, this subgraph is a connected component for graph g then you can say v4 as a connected component of graph, as another component, connected component of graph G, because V4, uh, which is a single vertex, is a subgraph of graph G, and it's a connected subgraph, and is not part of a larger connected subgraph of graph G. And there is one more connected component on the right hand side of this figure. Uh, this connected component contains four vertices V5, V6, V7, V8 and contains three edges E3, E4 and E5. Obviously uh, this connected component is connected and it's a subgraph of G and it's not a part of a larger subgraph uh, a larger connected subgraph of G. That's why it uh, satisfies all the three conditions of a uh, of the definition of a connected component. Okay, so here we define an Euler circuit. Um, consider G as a graph. An Euler circuit for graph G is a circuit that contains F Every vertex and every edge of graph G. So, an Euler circuit for G is a sequence of adjacent vertices and edges in graph G that has at least one edge, starts and ends at the same vertex, uses every vertex of G at least once and using every edge of G exactly once. So it should use an edge exactly once. And that's why we call Euler circuit a circuit. We don't call it an Euler walk because in a circuit repetition of edges is not allowed that's why every edge of graph g should be used in an euler circuit exactly once correct so let's see a theorem theorem 10 to 4 which basically gives us a necessary and sufficient condition uh, for a graph 
to have an Euler circuit. We say a graph G has an Euler circuit if and only if G is a connected graph and every vertex of G has positive even degree. So we define the degree of a vertex before. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges that are incident on that vertex. So here we say a graph has a Euler circuit if and only if all of its vertices have even uh, positive degrees. So consider uh, this graph. This graph is a is an undirected graph. is a uh, is a normal graph. It's not a directed graph. Uh, these arrows may be a little bit confusing, but these arrows are just here to show you the direction of uh, the circuit that I'm going to show you here. So, in this graph, uh, every vertex has an even degree. For example, A has a degree of 2, which is an even number. B has a degree of 2. The degree of C is 2, the degree of D is 4, which is even. The degree of E and H are 4, 2. And the degree of F, G, J, and I are 2, 2. Uh, so, every vertex in this graph has a degree of 2, so based on, has, a, has an even degree. And as a result, based on the theorem uh, 10 to 4, uh, this graph should contain an Euler circuit. So we start from node A, from vertex A, uh, and we create a circuit like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, H, E, G, H, J, I, D, and finally A. So we start from A and we finish at A. So the start and end of this uh, circuit is A. And we only use an edge exactly once. So we use every edge one and only one time. We do not reuse any edge, but some of the vertices are uh, seen more than once. For example, uh, vertex E was seen uh, twice. Once when I was going from D to E, and then I went to F, H and then came back to E, so I saw E twice. But it doesn't mean that this is not an Euler circuit, because in a circuit, a vertex can be repeated as many times as we want, but in a circuit, we are not allowed to repeat any edge. So we can only use an edge once in a circuit. So that's why. Uh, the walk that I just showed you is an Euler circuit. Okay, so we have a contrapositive version of this theorem, which basically say, uh, if some vertex of a graph has odd degree, then the graph does not have, a, have an Euler circuit. Why? Because if it has an Euler circuit, then the, vert the, you know, the degree of all the vertices should be even. So if you see a, ver if you see a graph uh, that has a vertex of odd degree, then you can easily conclude that that graph does not have any Euler circuit. So we defined an Euler circuit and we presented a sufficient and necessary condition for a graph to have an Euler circuit. Here we define an Euler trail 
from vertex V to vertex W in a graph G in the following way. We say uh, an Euler trail from V to W is a sequence of adjacent edges and vertices that starts at V, ends at W, passes through every vertex of G at least once, and traverses every edge of G exactly once. So a trail, an Euler trail, is very similar to an Euler circuit. The only difference is that in an Euler trail, the start and end points uh, should not be equal, but in an Euler circle, um, the start vertex and end vertex should be equal. So similar to an Euler circuit that had a sufficient and necessary condition, uh, here we also have a sufficient and necessary condition for a graph to have an Euler, to an Euler tray. So consider G a graph and let V and W be two distinct vertices of this graph. Uh, there is an Euler path from V to W. Instead of path, we should say tray. So this part of the book is not correct. You have to correct it. This is a tray. So there is there is an Euler trail from V to W if and only if uh, G is connected, V and W have odd degree, and all of the vertices of G have positive Reason number two is all other vertices of G have positive even degree. And the last condition is G should be connected. Right? So consider this graph. In this graph, A and B have odd degree, all other vertices have even degree. You see G has the degree of 2, H and E have a degree of 4, F, I, K, J, D and C have degree of 2 which are which are all even uh, numbers. So uh, here we are sure that there is a Euler trail from A to B, or there is an Euler trail from B to A. The direction of the trail is not important in this example. Why? Because we are just trying to show you that there is an Euler trail. So here is the trail. From A we go to G, then from G to H, from H to F, from F to E, then from E to H again, from H to I, from I to E again, from E to K, from K to J, from J to D, and from D to C, and finally from C to B. So you can see that there is an Euler trail from A all the way to B and this trail uh, will traverse every edge one, once and exactly once. Okay, so here uh, we define the Hamiltonian circuit. That's the last definition in this lecture. A Hamiltonian circuit in a graph G is a simple circuit that does that includes every vertex of G. So since a simple circuit does not allow repetition of vertices and edges, so a Hamiltonian circuit is a sequence of adjacent vertices and uh, distinct edges 
in which every vertex of G appears exactly once. You cannot have repetition of vertices, except for the first and the last vertex, so which are the same. The, the first and the last vertices of a simple circuit obviously are the same, but except the first and last one, there should not be any repeated vertices in a Hamiltonian circuit. Uh, okay, so we present a proposition which is very helpful for proving that a graph does not have a Hamiltonian circuit. This proposition basically says if graph G has a Hamiltonian circuit, or which says if a graph has a Hamiltonian circuit, then the graph should have a subgraph like H which satisfies these four conditions. First, H contains every vertex of graph G. Second, H is connected. Third, H has the same number of edges as vertices. And fourth, every vertex of H has degree two. So let's see example 10 to eight. In this example, we are going to show that this graph right here uh, does not have a Hamiltonian circuit. I'm going to prove this using proof by contradictions. So I first assume that this uh, graph is a Hamiltonian, has a Hamiltonian circuit, and then I, so I can use contradiction uh, using the proposition uh, 10 to 6. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's use the first condition of proposition 10 to 6. I say, okay, so if this graph wants to have a you know, Hamiltonian circuit, it should contain every vertex of graph G. So it should have, it should have A, B, C, C, and D. So H as a subgraph of graph G should have five vertices. Obviously, based on the uh, condition number three, since the number of edges and vertices are equal, it should also have five edges, right? Now, let's look at the uh, fourth condition. Every vertex of H has degree two, right? So obviously, A has degree two, B has degree two, C has degree 2, D has degree 2, but D has degree 4 in the original graph G. So since we are going to create a subgraph uh, with the degree 2 in every vertex, we need to remove at least uh, we need to remove two and only two vertices. Uh, I'm sorry, two and only two edges that are incident on D. So we should remove two of these four edges that are incident on uh, vertex B. So if we remove two of these edges, how many edges we are left? Uh, in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six different edges. So if we remove two of them, uh, we only have four different edges. However, based on the third property, we said we have five edges. So we cannot have five and four edges in a subgraph. The number of edges is either five or four. It cannot be both. So with this contradiction, as a result, we can say that we are the proof that graph G uh, does not have a Hamiltonian circuit. We use the method of proof by contradiction.